we can finally experience incredible VR clarity and it's such a massive leap that it feels like next-gen VR. The technology we've been dreaming of for years has become a reality. This is the Pimax Crystal, the highest-end VR headset I've ever tried that offers clarity I didn't think was possible in VR. It truly feels like a dream come true for us VR enthusiasts, but is it actually all it promises on paper? Today I'll show you what it's capable of, where it shines, where it doesn't, and why I actually have two of them. Let's go! I've tried quite a few VR headsets and this is by far the absolute best image quality I've experienced. But like all things in life, it's not perfect, so I hope this video will help you decide if it's right for you or not. For context, I'm running this off of my new Stormforce gaming PC with the highest specs available, like a 7950X 3D processor and a 4090 graphics card. While you can run the crystal on lower specs, you do need a beefy PC to get the most out of it, but I'll get into details about that later. Let's start with the specs, because the Pimax Crystal features nearly every piece of tech available in the world of VR today, including a standalone mode that doesn't require a PC. You'll be looking through their aspheric lenses at a pair of 2880x2880 per eye QLED and mini LED displays with a peak brightness of 200 nits. It's the highest resolution consumer headset available today and it currently offers a refresh rate of up to 120Hz with 144 and 160Hz modes currently in testing. The field of view is slated at 125 degrees horizontally and 140 degrees diagonally. But as with all VR headsets, the actual FOV will depend on your face and IPD. Talking about IPD, since the crystal also has eye tracking capabilities, it can also automatically set your IPD when you put on the headset. This feature was enabled in the latest update and it worked very well for me so far. But now let's talk about the elephant in the room. This is a thick headset. I mean, I get that it has all the bells and whistles, but it is clearly large and heavy, so let's discuss comfort a bit. In the box, it comes with two facial interface options, a pretty classic one which I did not find comfortable at all, and this one that I'm using, which extends the facial interface towards your forehead, and this helps with weight distribution by a huge amount. Now don't get me wrong, it's still big and heavy, but the the way they've designed the head strap makes it feel way less weighty than you'd think. Again, as with all VR headsets, it will depend on your face shape, but for me the clarity is worth the trade-off in terms of comfort. That being said, I would not recommend it for anyone who's into very active games or fitness, although I guess if you're trying to get some serious neck muscles, it could work for you. The audio solution mine came with is the optional DMAS high fidelity speakers, and they sound fantastic with crisp highs and mids as well as great bass response. The fact that they just float next to your ears helps with being aware of your surroundings while not making your ears sweat and delivering excellent audio quality. Because it's also a standalone headset featuring a toggle switch on the side here, it also has a battery in the back. The battery does help with weight balance a bit, but one thing I don't understand is the fact that the battery is still needed in PC VR mode. Going through the spec sheet, it seems the reason is that it uses the internal Snapdragon XR2 chip for what Pimax calls their customized PC VR engine dual processor. It does come with two batteries which last for 6 hours each in PC VR mode while also using the powered USB hub. And you can hot swap for longer session as you can always have one battery charging in the dock. The release buttons on the battery are not the greatest design as they require a stupid amount of forced release but you do get used to it after a while. The hardware is great on paper and an incredible experience when it works but I mentioned in the intro that I have two of them and the reason is that the first one developed a weird issue where I had a white line on the left display. It was like an overlay on top of everything so it ruined the experience. Pimax was extremely prompt in sending me a replacement but I don't know if that would have been the case if I wouldn't be a content creator so I thought I would mention it to give you the full picture. Okay so now that we've gone through the hardware let's talk a bit about software because this is where things get a bit complicated. Pimax is historically known for two things, pushing the boundaries of hardware with high resolution, high FOV headsets and kinda terrible software. The Pimax PC software is getting constant updates and has already gotten way better with patches since I got my crystal. It may be because I got my review unit later than other creators, but I haven't encountered any massive issues that have been reported by others in the past. I don't want to discourage anyone from getting this headset, but I do need to set expectations. You will have to tinker with the software from time to time, you will encounter bugs here and there, and you will need a decent amount of patience to make the most out of this 
headset. PC VR is by default an experience that, while incredible compared to standalone, does require a bit more technical knowledge to get going, and the Crystal is no exception. Pimax is actively working on improving the software and it's come very far already, but there's still definitely work to be done. The headset might not be recognized by your PC, you might have issues when trying to update the firmware and getting good performance, especially with the high resolution, so it's not quite as plug and play as I'd like. As good as the hardware is, it's nothing without good software to support it. But if you don't mind tinkering and are okay with sometimes having to wait for updates to fix minor things, then it's absolutely not a bad choice. So hardware, check. Software, check. But what about the actual experience of using this? Who is it for? What games work best for it? And would I recommend it? As I've mentioned before, I'm running the headset from my new gaming PC featuring a 4090 GPU. One aspect which I found very interesting is that even with a 4090, I can't fully max out everything. That might sound disappointing to some of you, and it did to me too until I thought about it a bit, because it means the headset is extremely future-proof and will scale extremely well with upcoming PC hardware. I for one can't wait until the 5090 is out next year. Hopefully I can find a buyer for a piece of my liver to afford it, but I think the Crystal will look even more incredible with next-gen GPUs. I had to start my Crystal journey with Half-Life Alex because while the game is well over three years old, Valve made it incredibly future-proof. With textures and details they knew no one will be able to see for years until the hardware catches up. Well, the hardware is there and I've noticed details I never knew were there, from Alex's hands to the environment and the disgusting enemies. It genuinely feels like a brand new game, and since the crystal also has local dimming, the darker areas of the game look pitch black and drive the immersion up by a lot. The colors are vivid, and the contrast ratio makes everything feel more real than ever. Now, Half-Life Alex is a good middle ground in terms of being an action game without a lot of sudden movements required. But what about something way more active like Bone Lab, Blade and Sorcery, or Swordsman VR? Well, the visuals are definitely still amazing, and the Pimax controllers did not cause me any issues, and are pretty much on par with any other inside out track controllers like the Quest 2 ones, but this is where you start to really notice the heft of this headset. The sheer size and weight are seriously not great for very active games like these, with the inertia of the crystal when turning your head or body quickly making long VR fighting sessions pretty difficult. While I'm definitely not the most fit guy, I did start feeling neck strain in games like these after as little as 20 minutes of intense gameplay. So if you're into very active games or especially fitness type, Titles, as fantastic as the visuals are, I would not really recommend the crystal for this type of VR. Where the crystal truly shines and is the absolute best in class is simulation games. Whether it's Microsoft Flight Simulator or Racing Title, due to how little head movement is involved and the stationary nature of these types of games, I cannot even play with any other headset after trying this. The immersion of VR racing, for example, has made me prefer it over flat screen, but I've always had to consciously take a hit in terms of visual fidelity. With the Crystal, that's not the case anymore because everything looks amazing. And with the right settings and PC hardware, it's probably around 80 to 90% there compared to a flat 4K monitor. Whether we're talking about the cockpit itself, the brake markers, or opponents in the distance, everything looks fantastic. At least on a high end PC like the one from Stormforce I'm using. But what if you don't have a top of the line PC? Does that mean you can't even enjoy the Pimax Crystal? Well, thankfully, no, because of something called dynamic foveated rendering. Put simply, thanks to the eye tracking technology in this headset, you can just render the spot where you're looking in full resolution, with everything else rendered in lower resolution. This dramatically increases performance and is completely unnoticeable while you're playing. You will need a third party piece of software called OpenXR Toolkit, which is free to enable this for most games. But this small bit of tinkering to get it just right is totally worth it in terms of performance gains. All in all, the Pimax Crystal is the most incredible VR experience I've ever had and even with all the quirks and occasional frustration due to the software, it's getting better and better with every patch. The fact that most of the drawbacks are software related means they can easily be fixed in future firmware updates, making this headset one of the best PC VR experiences on the market right now. Also, if you're already a Valve Index owner for example, Pimax 
also sells a lighthouse tracked faceplate replacement, allowing you to enjoy these amazing visuals with base stations and index knuckle controllers for an even better overall experience. So if you're into sim racing, flight simulators or even any other title that doesn't involve an extreme amount of movement, I'd highly recommend the Pimax Crystal if you can afford it and a good enough PC to run it. And you can find a link in the description with a small discount as well. I personally consider this mostly a PC VR headset which is why I haven't talked about the standalone mode, especially since it has just been enabled fairly recently so I will need to test it more before giving you my thoughts. If you're also looking to buy or just curious about what a high-end PC can do for VR, check out this video next. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll catch you soon. Cheers guys!